Hello and welcome to another episode of the Common Man's Take on Sports with Kevin and Quentin. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about the last college football game, Duke versus Clemson. I was absolutely surprised and taken off guard by that game. Yes, very surprised. Duke dominated Clemson in that game. Um, I did not expect that. Not at all. Um, I was very impressed with Duke. Um, not so much with Clemson. Uh, Clemson had a lot of good drives in that game, but they turned the ball over. They had two blocked field goals in the red zone, and they had two goal line fumbles in the red zone. Um, so Duke definitely deserved to win that game. I just did not expect um, those outcomes. And I definitely did not expect uh, Duke to win that game 28-7. Uh, to 7. Um, uh, it was that was very very surprising to me, uh, but Duke came to play. Their their defense came to play. They played tough. Uh, Clemson made a lot of mistakes to shoot shot themselves in the foot. Um, to be honest, Duke probably should have won that game by more. They had a couple of mishaps themselves that cost them some points. Um, so really, that that score should have been worse than that. So. I I was, wow, I that that's that surprised me. Like I there's it, it, I I could not believe that a Davo Sweeney team um, lost like that. That that was I, that that begs the question now. Um, you know everybody has been saying it, but that really begs the question now. Is the is Clemson's reign in the college football playoff over now? at least for the time being. Um, it's going to be hard for them to work their way back in the playoff from a, a loss to do. Um, what do you think about that? Um, my thoughts on that are that this really did surprise me too. When I checked the score, I was very surprised that Clemson lost 28-7 to and they only scored one touchdown. I was very surprised for um, I thought Duke was, I thought Clemson was going to beat them with Cade Klubnick because he did very good in the ACC championship game. But now that I'm looking at this, uh, you know, it, it just really surprises me. I'm, I, I think Clemson's championships national championships are over because this um, I can't believe a Dabo Swing team lost to a Duke team they were number nine and they faced an unranked team that's that doesn't make any sense <laughs> doesn't make any sense at all for a Davos winning team, a lose to Duke. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, just for a recap here real quick. So, the games that surprised me in week one that I was not, uh, not, not ready for was um, the first one was the uh, Colorado TCU game. I thought that one could go either way, but I thought TCU would win. So again, hats off to, to Dion in, in Colorado for winning that one, beating TCU. Um, that game surprised me. I thought that Colorado could be decent. Um, I'm still out on them right now. I need to see them play, you know, better competition as they go down the line. I don't, I'm not so sure what TCU is going to look like this year. So I'm not sure if, uh, you know, TCU is just that bad. Or Colorado was that good, right? Yeah. The next game that surprised me was the Ohio State Indiana game. Um, even though Ohio State ended up winning twenty-three to three, 
I thought that they would dominate IU. And honestly, if you watch that game, they really didn't. IU kind of dominated them. Um, what was concerning for me in that game was that uh, the Ohio State offensive line, I know they have a bunch of brand new people on that offensive line, but man, it did not look good. Um, so I don't think all of that was on the quarterback. That offensive line struggled. I think it showed. Um, they got a lot of work to do, uh, and they got to do it fast because if I'm not mistaken, uh, I know they have Youngstown State this weekend, but don't they have a date with Notre Dame soon, early in the schedule? Yep. I think week five, four? Week four. So uh, they got a lot of work to do to prepare for that Notre, that Notre Dame game. I'll tell you right now, Notre Dame looks pretty good. Um, so if they have those same problems once they get to Notre Dame, uh, Notre Dame may – I haven't seen Notre Dame beat Ohio State um, – in a very long time, but I think you could see Notre Dame beat Ohio State if they can't fix their problems by the time they get to that game. Yep. Um, I, I, the, the thing that surprised me was usually, you know, even though the defense the last couple of years has been porous for Ohio State, at least the offense has been, you know, humming and clicking in all cylinders. This is the first time that I've seen a an offense under Ryan Day that, that – just looked like it struggled all game. It looked like it struggled. So that game surprised me um, for sure. I, I thought Ohio State would dominate in that one uh, a lot more. Um, the only other game that surprised me was the, um, well, Purdue, Fresno, Fresno State surprised me. I, I thought Purdue would, would pull that one out. I was surprised they lost to Fresno State. Uh, I feel bad for the uh, new coach at Purdue. That's a tough loss right out the gate. We'll see if he can't uh, pick that up, maybe recover from that. But that, that was a tough loss to Fresno State. I it surprised me a little bit. I thought Purdue would beat them. Um, Illinois Toledo surprised me after how, how well Illinois showed out last year. I thought uh, Brett Bielema had really turned them around, uh, got the players buying into his system. And, uh, you know, I, I thought they would be good again this year. Uh, man, 38 to, 30 to 28, and they barely beat Toledo on a last-second play. Like, they really, Illinois should have lost that game to Toledo. That surprised me, well, for sure. I thought Illinois would be a little bit better than that this year. Some games that surprised me. Uh, first, number one, is this Colorado TCU game. Mm -hmm. I thought TCU would maybe. I, I thought TCU would um, probably would probably um, win that game by 10 points, but I didn't know that Colorado's offense would be this good. And I thought the defense would be the same, but the defense surprised me. I, um, their, their, their defense surprised me when allowing 42 points in just one game and like 500 yards. Um, the other game that surprised me was the Illinois and Toledo game. They should have lost to Toledo because that's, I mean, they did really good last year. They almost went to Indianapolis and, uh, mm -hmm. and they almost lost to Toledo. I thought they had something going here. I thought they had something going, but they almost lost to Toledo. That, uh, yeah, that's tough. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, the Fresno State and Purdue game. Uh, I thought Purdue would win this. I was not expecting Fresno State to win it. Uh, now, and it's this close of a game, only four points apart. So there wasn't a lot of defense in that game as well. But uh, let's hope that the new Purdue c 
coach. Can uh can handle. Uh, you can wipe that off and just forget about it. Forget about the embarrassing loss of Fresno State. Um. Another game that surprised me was the uh, Florida State LSU game. I thought that one could go either way, um, but I was definitely was not expecting LSU to collapse in the second half and, and Florida State to, to make those kind of adjustments and really just blow that game open 45-24. Um, to 24. I watched that game. I was thoroughly supply, surprised with the collapse of LSU in the second half. Um, I thought it would come down to the last possession again. Um, it was a very close game at the half, 17-14, to 14, and then the second half was just a different story. LSU collapsed in offense and defense, and Florida State flourished. Like it, it was a tale of two halves. It was completely different halves. So that, that game definitely surprised me. I did not expect, uh, especially the way the game started, with both of them playing really tough defense um, and playing good offense, uh, I did not expect – Florida State to run away with that in the second half. Florida State looks really good. After that Duke game, uh, Florida State could be the team to beat in the ACC this year. Um, I will say they, they looked really good against good competition in LSU. We'll see how LSU does going forward. But I have to say, Quentin, I think that it may be a new day in the ACC. Florida State may be the team to beat this year. Yep, they may break that losing streak against Clemson. Yeah, um, and of course, the last game we already talked about the Clemson uh, Duke game uh, surprised me a lot. I again, I was just I was taken back at that game and, and just the mistakes that, that the Clemson team made were just not characteristic for a, a Dabo Sweeney led team. Um, not like that. Uh, they they got a lot to clean up. Uh, they got a long year ahead of them. Yeah. So we'll see we'll see what happens. They couldn't even beat a Duke team when they still have a Florida State team to face. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's move on to the NFL. And tonight there is a Detroit Lions and Kansas City Chiefs game. So. Let's talk about that a little bit. The first game of the NFL. Um, Kansas City is favored by six and a half. Um, I did see that Travis Kelsey is hurt. Yes, I just saw that yesterday as well. That's that's going to be a big loss for them in this game. Plus, I agree. Plus, they don't have Chris Jones. Mm, so... Uh, this is an opportunity for Detroit, even though Kansas City is favored. You know, uh, they missing, I missing Travis Kelsey out of their offense is, is a huge, uh, huge problem for them because he is a uh, safety valve for Patrick Mahomes. Uh, and he's also, a, you know, an end zone threat for touchdowns. Um, he has been for Patrick Mahomes for a long time. So this is an opportunity for Detroit. Uh, you might see Detroit pull this one out. The tough. You might see Detroit pull out a tough game. Are they playing at? Where are they playing? Are they playing at Detroit? No, they're playing at Kansas City. Kansas City. Okay. So that's that's. Uh, Kansas City does have it at home, so uh, that's a plus for them. Uh, but uh, you know, I think Detroit might have an opportunity here. Wait. Looks like Travis Kelsey hyperextended his knee. It looks like they did a, a scan and he has no no damage, but he definitely will not be playing tonight um, in their game. Looks like uh, I, I was looking at this one. I'm in St. Raw or I'm in Raw St. Brown. Sorry. Um, and dyslexic here. I was <laughs> looking at the name and said it backwards. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, he's, he looks doesn't. like he's he was uh, having an ankle issue. However, he was not on the injury report Monday. So as of right now, he will be playing in the game tonight. 
and uh, I don't know. That's that that might be a really good game tonight. We'll have to check that out. Uh, should be uh, should be really good. Uh, first game Thursday night football. Uh, I definitely will be ch catch uh, some of that game. See how the Chiefs and the Lions look. Um, I'm gonna go with the uh, the underdog here. And since Kansas City is missing a couple of pieces, I think Detroit pulls this one out in a close game. I say Detroit 21 to 17. Oh, okay. That, that's my prediction for that game. 21-17 Detroit. I think my man Aiden Hutchinson is going to be a nightmare for Pat Mahomes today. We'll see if that stands true or not. Um, I was looking at the uh, list of top defensive ends uh, slash pass rushers this year for the NFL, and I did not see him on it, and I couldn't believe it. How After the season he had last year, how could you not have Aiden Hutchinson on that list? Plus what was, is going on? I know. it was Plus, it was his rookie season. I agree. Um I, I think he's going to be a menace again this year on the defensive side of the ball. I don't think he's going to have any kind of drop-off or sophomore wall. I, I think he's going to be a menace again. Uh, and I think he's uh, he's going to be tough to beat. Let's look at some more week one games on Sunday. You got Carolina and Atlanta. Um, Atlanta's favored by three. I think I'm going to go... I'm going to take the underdog in that one again. I'm going to go Carolina by three. And oh, okay. I think Carolina wins 28 to... 28-21. Carolina. 28-21. Okay. Um, Houston and Baltimore are to be a good one. Baltimore's favored by nine and a half. I think Baltimore wins that game. Um... Yeah, I, I can go with that. Baltimore by nine and a half. I don't know if they win by nine and a half, but uh, I'd say Baltimore wins by a touchdown. I'll go 21-14. Oh, Jacksonville and Indy. I think Jacksonville wins. Jacksonville is favored by three and a half, but I think they win that easily. Um, I'm going 28-14 in that one. Pittsburgh and San Francisco. San Francisco is favored by two and a half. San Francisco, I believe, does win that one. I think they win it by more than two and a half. Uh, I think San Francisco wins that one easily. Arizona and Washington. Uh, Washington's favored by six. I think with Kyler Murray hurting out, I, I definitely would go with Washington uh, against over Arizona. Cleveland and Cincinnati. I'm going with, uh, let's see, hold on, before I make that pick, let me, let me check something out here. Okay, okay, okay. So right now, okay, so, so Burrow, Burrow's day to day, so right now he could play on Sunday. If he plays, uh, I think that uh, Cincinnati definitely wins that game. They're favored by two and a half. I think they, they definitely win that game uh, probably by seven. Um, Tennessee, New Orleans. Mm, New Orleans is favored by three. Let's go... I'm going to go Tennessee. Tennessee wins oh. that game. Mark Henry has a big day against New Orleans. I'll go Tennessee. Mark Henry? Or Derrick Henry, sorry. Uh, Tampa Bay, Minnesota. Minnesota wins that one easily. They're favored by six and a half. I definitely believe they can win that by a touchdown, maybe more. Seattle and the Rams, that's a tougher one. Seattle's favored by five. I'll take that. <clears throat> I'll take Seattle by five. 
Chicago and Green Bay. Uh, Green Bay has owned Chicago <laughs> for a long time now. Chicago is favored by two and a half. I think that, let's see, where's that being played? That is being played. Is that at Soldier Wait. Field? Yeah, Soldier Field. Mm, I think uh, the Bears still have Nightmares at Green Bay. I'm taking Green Bay in that one. Okay. La Las Vegas and Denver. I'll take Denver in that one. Denver's favored by four. I'll take that. Uh, I think Denver wins that game. Chargers and the Dolphins. The Chargers are favored by three. Let me check the injury report for that one real quick. Let me see. Mm. Okay, so both teams are fairly healthy. I. You know what? I like the Chargers in that one. I think the Chargers win by either a field goal or a touchdown. I'll, I'll take the Chargers. I like the Chargers in that one. Um, Philadelphia, New England. Philadelphia wins that one easily. They're favored by four and a half. I think they win by a touchdown or more. And then Dallas and the Giants. I'll take Dallas in that one. They're favored by three and a half. I'll, I'll take them by a touchdown. And then Monday Night Football. Bills and the Jets. Buffalo's favored by one. Wow, interesting. I oh, think. So they really think Aaron gonna... I think Buffalo wins by more than one. I think Buffalo wins that easily. Um, I think Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs have a big day. Um, I think they spoil Aaron Rodgers' Jets debut. So, okay. I'm going Buffalo on that one. Buffalo all the way. All right, for me, the Lions and Chiefs game. So, for me, the Chiefs had no Travis Kelsey. And that's gonna, that's that's really gonna impact. He's been, he's really been an impact on their offense. Now that they don't have them, uh, now this is gonna be this this is gonna be a problem. I think the Lions can uh, come away with this one. By about a touchdown right here by seven points. Um, the Chiefs are missing two uh, stars that they really need in this game, which are Chris Jones and Travis Kelsey. And uh, that's gonna that's gonna really impact on this game. But I think the Lions are going to win this one. I think Aiden Hutchinson will have a great game on mm -hmm. Patrick Mahomes. Okay. Um, here we go. Before you make your pick for the Carolina Atlanta, I just, let me just say that uh, my pick was a homer pick because I'm a Carolina fan, so I think they beat the Falcons. I don't know if they can or not. But go ahead. Um, <laughs> uh, so for me, the Atlanta and Carolina game, let me check. I don't think injuries matter in that game. I, 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 I think that uh, Atlanta's probably going to win that game, to be honest. Injuries or no injuries. I just don't know if Carolina's there yet. I feel like Carolina might win this one by three points. I think uh, I think it's going to be a tough game against the Falcons, but I think Carolina can just slightly win this. Slightly. Right. 24 to 21. Right, who you got, Houston and Baltimore? For me, Houston and Baltimore, it's going to be Baltimore. I feel like they're going to win by more than nine and a half points. Okay. I feel like it's going to be 47 to 30. Oh, wow. Okay. 47 to 30. All right. Let's go Jacksonville, Indiana. Okay. Jacksonville, Indiana. For me, for 
Jacksonville, Indiana. I think the Jaguars win that by more than three and a half. All right. I think they can win this by five points. Okay. Maybe seven, but um, I think the Jaguars come away with this. And then the 49ers and Steelers game, for me, I think that's going to be the 49ers winning by more than two and a half. Um, by maybe like, maybe nine, eight points okay. against the Steelers. And then we go to the Cardinals and Commanders. For me, the Cardinals and Commanders game, it's going to be Washington winning by six points. Mm-hmm. I do think um, if Kyler Murray is hurt, then Arizona has nothing on Washington or any team. Yeah, he's out. He's on, I'm pretty sure he's on the pup list. Um, so he's out for the first four weeks, I think. So that's, uh, that's not good. But Cincinnati and Cleveland. Okay, so Cincinnati and Cleveland. This is a maybe right here. Um, this is a tough decision because... No one knows if Joe Burrow's gonna play. Um, if but if Joe Burrow does play, then it's gonna be, then it's going to be Bengals winning this one. But if he doesn't, it's gonna be the Browns in favor. Okay, what about Tennessee and New Orleans? Okay, for me, Tennessee and New Orleans are going to be the uh, Saints. Okay. Uh, the Saints defense is, you know, the Saints have a good defense. Um, and I think that's going to be some trouble. That may be some trouble for um, the passing game, but maybe Derrick Henry. Okay. I'm I'm not I'm not sold on the running. I'm not sold on that yet. But I think the Saints win this by three. Tampa Bay, Minnesota. Okay, Tampa Bay and Minnesota. I'm gonna go with the Vikings here by six and a half. Uh, I think the Vikings can still beat the Buccaneers because the Buccaneers have don't have um, the best quarterback at the moment, but they might win it. But I'm gonna but I'm gonna go with the Vikings. Well, Baker Mayfield's the starting quarterback. Yeah, he's not he's not that good. All right, Rams in Seattle. Okay, so Seattle and the Rams. I think Seattle does win by five. Okay. Thirty-five to thirty. Um, I am sold on that. Bears and Packers. Okay, so the Packers and Bears. I'm going with. Ah, uh, I mean, this is. I feel like the Bears will still have nightmares of hmm. the Packers. <laughs> Aaron <Still>. Rodgers? <laughs> no, not Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers at the Jets! I know, but they they had nightmares of Aaron Rodgers for so many years. <laughs> true, true. They did have nightmares. Um, I, I do think that the Packers get away with this one. Okay. By, well. by three points. All right. Um, seventeen to fourteen. All right. I think that they're gonna get away with this just by three points. Las Vegas and Denver. Okay, Las Vegas and Denver. You know, uh, the Raiders. They they're trying to figure out their qu- quarterback situation. I uh, do think that the Broncos will win this one. Okay. Um, this is an easy win for the Broncos. Yeah, I agree. I, I think they win by 7, 27 to 20 under Sean Payton. And then we go to the Dolphins and Chargers. I do think that the Chargers will win this, but I think that they will win this by more than three points. Okay. I think they'll win this 30 to 20. Okay. What about Philadelphia and New England? Okay, Philadelphia and New England. Uh, for me, Philadelphia and New England, it's going to be uh, Philadelphia. Okay. But I do think they will win by more 
than four and a half points. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I think they will win. I think Jalen Hurts is going to have another big year. Yeah, I think they'll win 33-20. to 20. All right, Dallas and the Giants. All right, Dallas and the Giants. I'm gonna go. I, I'm, I'm gonna go with Dallas. Um, this is a tough game here, but I'm gonna go with Dallas. I think the Dallas Cowboys are going to come away with the win here against the Giants. The Giants. Um, they're gonna come away with that win. It's going to be an easy one for the Cowboys. I think they come away with a win larger than um, than uh, three and a half points. Okay. What about the Bills and the Jets on Monday night, September the 11th? Uh, for me, the Bills and the Jets, I think the Bills win this one and okay. spoil Aaron Rodgers' Jets debut. Um, I do think they're going to win by more than one point. I think they would win... 33 to 27 in this game. Okay. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to have a good debut, but just not a win. Okay, fair enough. All right, well, that will do it for our show today. Um, again, we thank you guys for listening. Just remember, we're on uh, Spotify. Uh, you can find us on Apple Podcasts. You can find us on uh Samsung, you can find us on Google, um, anywhere or most platforms that have podcasts, you can find us. The Common Man's Take on Sports. We also have a YouTube and Facebook page. If uh, you don't have access to those platforms either, you can find us on YouTube and Facebook under the same name, The Common Man's Take on Sports. Um, we appreciate you listening and uh, please subscribe and follow us. Uh, And we hope you enjoyed our show. We thank you. And that's it.